Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Brick by Brick podcast. Here with me, I have Hector Rodriguez. You guys know him as Hex, the man, the myth, the legend himself, bringing the green wall together, giving everybody so many opportunities over the years. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, first off, I ask everybody the same question. Uh, Who am this, I today? No, but okay. my version of that question yeah. is what does the green wall mean to you? A uh, breath of fresh air in a time in which I needed it most in my lifetime. Um, the most humbling uh, experience I've ever ever had um, uh, as a 42 year old man. The phenom. Um, by, the time I was 20, by the time I was 29 years old, like I knew what my life was going to be. Yeah. And that was essentially just continuing to work in corporate America and live a regular life. And, you know, something sparked the popularity of, uh, of my team and the green wall was born. And was One of the it, first bricks in the wall, by the way. The, the, well, I guess not, not the first. Arguably yeah. the first. I don't know. I guess by the time it became was, the green wall, yeah, like you were the first. Yeah, you were already established. Yeah, yeah. Um, what does it mean to get the green wall back? Obviously there was trials and tribulations yeah. for the last few years. I had to do it, right? Like I, I, had, I, I did it for the tattoos. I did it for the, for, for the culture. I did it because they, they followed me back. And you know, although the Huntsman offered safe refuge and offered us a place to like still yeah. be together, like it, it, as beautiful as that brand was, and as much as I, I liked it, I think uh, that nothing beats the, the OG. And when the opportunity came for that to be, it, it would have, no matter how long it would have taken, I would have ended up with Optic at one point or another. Yeah. There, was, there was no shot in hell. I mean, even if I was, I don't know, even if it would have taken 15 years, in 15 years, I would have been like, you know, here, we, we're back. Yeah, pulling so, that chain out of your envelope. Yeah, uh, quicker than I thought it was. A lot it, quicker was, than I think yeah. all of us. Yeah, man, um, and, and, and it, was, uh, it, was, it was a struggle, uh, but I don't lose, man. You know? That's right. We stay <laughs> win. the 40-year-old phenom, best in the game, best I ever done did it. Uh, yeah, I've talked to probably 10 to 15 people, um, fans ranging as far back as 2012. Um, I think one of the newest fans got introduced during the Huntsman, mm -hmm. so that was his introduction to the green wall. And uh, I think everybody agrees that as good as the Huntsman was, there was something missing. Um, some sort of little, I think it was just the background of, yeah, the history of Optic, of the name itself. Um, as much as it's not so much about the name, it's more about the people and That's everything. Right. It, there was something missing with the name. Yeah. Um, I so that. that being said, I did ask a few people to uh, ask some stuff off of Twitter. Okay. So I'll start with those questions. Um, Sean, or Sporty Kid, if you're watching, uh, he said, looking back, what would you consider to be one of your more defining moments with Optic that helped shape the Greenwall family into what it is? Wow. Uh, I think it for sure had to have been the first time that like, I saw people cheering for, for Optic. And whether it was 15, whether it was 20 people, like, I don't remember really. It, was, uh, it had to have been like, the, first, the first tournament in 2011 yeah. that I was just like, mind blown by, by, the, by what that could turn into. Mm -hmm. Right, because there was only like 15 people there, but our videos were getting hundreds of thousands of views. So I'm like, yeah. this is those 100,000 people manifest in, in front of me, and this can turn into something bigger once all of these people realize that this is an actual movement and there's people there. Just wearing a Huntsman t uh, jersey. I've, right. I've seen a few. Yeah. I saw some, uh, some Huntsman, the Omens cookout series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw oh, some yeah. of that at Champs last year. Yep, yep, yep. So. It's always nice to see, yeah. Especially like the uh, the foundation hoodie. Yeah. When I see that one, I'm like, that's a, that's so that's a I, real one. So do I. Because it was, <laughs> again, right? Like that that uh, that moment, right? That moment like meant so much to me, also, right? Because it was a celebration of, like, you know, nobody saw me struggling for three years, like battling what I have to do yeah. for three years. Well, you, I mean, you've talked about it before. Like, you're a very internal person. Mm -hmm. You'll just bottle well, it why up. Why am I going to stress people out for it? Yeah. Stress, right? like, I do the same thing um, where it just... I say good, but it's not for everyone. It's not, I feel like it's not healthy, but it's it's also not healthy to stress everyone else around the you out. The way I eat isn't healthy. This is the, true. The way that I this don't <laughs> exercise isn't healthy. Many, many things yeah. that are not healthy. Uh, moving on, we have Ethan, mm -hmm. or the Avenger. Um, you probably know him from his phenomenal collection of Optic oh, Gear. Yeah. The one and only Flawless jersey. Yeah, listen, I'll tell you one thing. Oh my God, where did he get that one? He got that on eBay. That is Flawless's jersey. Flawless's. Yeah. That's sick. So. Oh, Flawless, you disappoint me. Well, the, actually, I don't care about the black one, the, the white one. The white one, one. Yeah. yeah. As soon as I get an assistant, a right-hand man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
get you the one that he asked me for one. I don't remember. He, he changed it. I was talking to him this morning. He originally he wanted, no, oh. no, I was uh, messaging him, but he originally wanted the 2015 blackout. Yeah. He has secured one. We've done some digging. We believe it's actually one of Hitch's old jerseys. Okay. Uh, but he now wants the 2016, if possible. Uh, this one here, doesn't care what color, okay. but the Black Ops 3 2016, um, that's what he's changed it to. Uh, let's see, let's well, go. I have duplicates, I think, of, of most. So. Hopefully, I think by Black Ops 3, things are established enough yep. that there weren't so many, like your vintage ones you were tweeting out, mm -hmm. the Sniper mm -hmm. one. I First want, one ever. want the sniper shield. Yeah. That's the money maker. Yep. Uh, my introduction to Optic was early 2010. Okay. So, sniping um, so during snipers. Yep. Uh, my favorite sniper of all time is the one and only D Treats. Okay. The man, the myth, the legend himself. The, the man himself. Uh, I'm going to get him on here actually at some okay, point too. Cool. So. If you need help, let me know. I'll, uh, I'll I will. I will. Uh, let's see. Walter Nader, he actually, him and I just sat down, had a really good episode, and he does a lot of mental health work. And one of the topics we talked about towards the end was mental health in esports, specifically mm -hmm. Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. And are there things in place by either organizations or the league to help yes. get players access if they need it? Yep. There is. Good. Yeah, the league The league provides a phone number to everybody for any... Um, any any mental uh, issues, any fatigue, any of that, like there's a number that they can call and speak to a professional. Yeah. yeah, and that's something that we talked about as well, is I'm sure there's many more players utilizing that, but because it's such a personal thing, yeah. you've only seen a couple actually mention it. Right. Pristini, Maniac, obviously, mm -hmm. with, with his whole thing. Yeah. Um, but I do hope and believe that a lot of players utilize that. You just don't talk about it. It's real personal. If they don't want to talk about it, they shouldn't talk about they it. They shouldn't talk about yeah. it. Uh, firing forward, we have Flipside asking what your favorite strain is. Uh, my chem driver. Uh, yeah. Chem driver uh, is mine. Like this is this is my cup of coffee in the morning if I'm able to smoke. Unfortunately, in Texas it's illegal. So yeah. I, I go and it's I, I guess it's kind of a good thing that I go like long weeks without yeah without smoking. So then when I get back, like I have a a chem driver ready. Now I am looking for other. Um, facilities and grows that, that also grow camp driver to try those yeah but the one from our farm uh by jason is at coastal is fucking delicious really so good my favorite speaking of coastal i actually brought with me i know what that is you know what it is yeah, yeah, yeah. this i'll get you to sign that at the end hopefully of course everyone watching the uh i think they only made like five six seven that's of good, these that's a good one um yeah i saw i asked you i was like hey what's up with these uh, you Thanks. originally were gonna try to just give it to me, yeah. but he told me to, to hit him up, and they did give me one. Good. So I made sure to bring it. Yeah. Well, uh, I didn't make it, by the way. Somebody else. No, made it's it. super cool though. Xbox. Um, I right. love that it was the 360 covers so do I. where it all started. So, do I. Um, <laughs> so we uh, we also have a question here. Can we expect a Halo Major here in the future? I don't know how exactly how HCS works as far as organizing the tournaments, mm -hmm. but is that something if they did do team? majors i don't i don't see why not i mean you know texas is, is a very good hub easy to get to it's not it's in the middle of the country yeah we obviously have the the stadium now that we can rent out congrats to. by the way that's Thank huge you. yeah yeah um so now we have the stadium that people can just you know rent out and, and operate so we'll run it up hire esports engine which is the people that are running hcs they'll contact mlg us basically yeah. Yeah. yeah adam apicel those good guys uh someone else is also asking as far as challengers goes, is there any sort of plans regarding challengers? And basically, people want Optic Nation back. Mm -hmm. People want that. I don't know if you want to call them a B team, but but they want that as yeah. a challengers I, representation. I, I mean, I, I'd love to, right? I mean, obviously, General is, is very close to the family, so I think that he would be like the perfect person to start that up. Uh, we haven't really talked about it, although he is here, like uh, helping Troy and uh, and Rambo. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not about whether or not we're ready to, 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 you know, continue to invest in Jordan. I think it's more about whether or not the challenger scene is ready to be invested into. And I don't think that, that it is. And I don't want to go into there being the only people that are covering the events and doing yeah. like uh, the, the, We, we well, can't be the only people working. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think they've made improvements over mm -hmm. these first few years regarding challengers. Yeah. Uh, I think ultimately what, at least for the fans, we all want very similarly to like the open bracket yep. back in the day that yep. kind of feeds in mm -hmm. um, and I think the really cool thing back in the day especially was when you would see an open bracket team actually break into bracket play yeah um, having something like that I think 
for majors, my idea would be, you know, you have your 12 teams who paid to get their position in the league. If you made it to where majors had 16 teams and the 12 teams that paid are secured, they're in, but you had room for four people to come out of challengers yeah. and, and break into some pool play or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the issue there too, though, is like if you if, if we invest time and effort into into that, um, you know, we're, we're they're going to get locked up, you know, like, like yeah. we're not in the business of farming people growing their brand and sending them off to whoever needs them in the league. That, yeah. And, and that's that's like the, the double-edged sword, right? Like you want to help the challenger scene, but at the same time you're sort of creating these monsters and in their own right that they're going to go work for somebody else. Yeah, you're going to go you. feed the competition, which you so always have to... We, we have to think about it. Like, yeah. Yeah. For sure. A um, couple of questions of my own now. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any favorite moments in particular throughout the... Uh, what 15 winning, years now yeah winning <laughs> winning uh winning cut xp okay uh, yep 2011 good moment because everybody was on stage and i was by myself um with uh i was sitting myself in the middle of the crowd all the way in the back and it was me jericho gold glove um uh, dr disrespect was there as himself as guy beam yeah and uh and i just remember everybody coming up and hugging me as we were doing that i don't, I, I don't know where the video is but it's there somewhere maybe in my x-files but it was such a surreal moment to have like all my friends just like as hyped for us winning as, as yeah as we were. well especially I, I imagine back in 2011 where it's so early so much in, in its infancy um at that time it it's not that it wasn't business but it was just your friends it was like yeah. you and your homies making videos yeah, yeah. just mean, still, trying to do something still that way yeah like you, you can't work with people for 15 years and see them every single day and not become friends yeah you know so it, it actually works better because I, I'm, I'm more involved in their personal success than i would have that i would be with somebody that plays for me that i don't know if you're just a businessman yeah yeah which makes sense i think that's something that's contributed to yeah. the family feeling um for me having watched for so long like that was the first thing that got me hooked was like i felt like i knew everybody mm -hmm. as we're all posting so many videos yeah. you guys were really open yep. Um, and then just seeing, you know, this group of guys I watch blow up over the years. A group of guys that look exactly like you, do the same yeah. thing that you do. Um, and that's like the majority of people, right? Like it's, it, it, if, if you give yourself a chance to be relatable to mm -hmm. the people and you don't fucking take this high road approach about everything that you do because you have a hundred thousand followers on fucking Twitter, yeah. you're going to win. It's uh, it's all about relatability. And yeah, this is in Hollywood where, you know what I mean? Like this is, this is the internet and this is fun well, you're community. Being very reachable. I mean, even this, right? Like never in a million years would I think, especially when I think back to, you know, freshman 13, 14 year old me having this moment, mm -hmm. like that's unreal. Um, so just being available, I think, is, is huge. You guys have obviously done a great job of it, better yeah. than a lot of organizations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's easier now that the page is around just, like, getting it all scheduled. Yeah. Um, so she definitely helped out with a lot. Yeah, hopefully she uh, gets a speedy recovery. Yeah, yeah, I was a little yeah. worried when she wasn't messaging me back yesterday, and she yeah, was like, yeah, oh, I had surgery. I was like, surgery, oh, man. that's I forgot, you're that you page. I know, I felt bad. Yeah, yeah. The first thing, I, I, when she hit me back, the first thing I said was, how was surgery? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Don't even worry about scheduling no, how was awesome. surgery yeah I tell, I, she keeps working i tell her to yeah. stop and she's so just gonna let her do what she always does yeah um last couple things if there were what's like a series i guess over the years like a uh, smooth comp or anything like that or is there smooth anything comp. you would like to see come smooth. back in some version smooth comp is the, is, the, is the best youtube series that any esports org has ever created including our vision, I think, because of what it took. We committed to doing 52 episodes for Briss Mate. The importance of it- Bring was, back Briss Mate. Well, that's what I've been saying, right? <laughs> but the beauty about that is that we launched that product for Pepsi, Yeah. right? Like we launched it and it had a super fast trajectory upwards. But then after that, after we stopped posting the videos and stuff, like it sort of like started to scale down, yeah. unfortunately. But the one thing that I do, and if anybody's watching this, and I know that it'd be hard as hell for you to part ways with, but I need all four flavors. I just yeah. I don't have them anymore. I don't have my I don't have the mango. Yeah, I don't have the uh, the, grape, the dragon fruit and all the other ones like the I, mango I, one though was mm -hmm. that was elite. That was super elite. My favorite one. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing that's missing in my collection. And I don't even know it, there was so much of it that I just figured, oh, I'll grab some at some point and next thing you know just next thing you know it's fucking five six years later and I don't have yeah. it in my collection so Sad. If anyone is watching and you guys do have some extra cans laying around or something you'd yeah, like to contribute. No, no. I don't want it for free. I'll pay. I'll pay. Um, and then last uh, two questions, I guess. Sure. Would be, you know, you obviously just tweeted regarding Matt getting his promotion. Congratulations, Matt. Mm -hmm. And you're looking for a new Matt. Mm -hmm. 
Um, are there any details that, that you're ready to share on that yet? Not yet. I, I just don't know if I'm ready to... I'm ready. I need it. So, so the thing is, like, I need, right? Yeah. But I don't know if I'm ready to bring somebody else into the hack supporters to live and breathe with the team. And, and Matt was such a good find. Um, and I, I literally just asked him on, I think, a camera, maybe in the vlog. And I'm like, you know, how do you, how do you think, you know, this is going to go for the new person that comes in and he's like dude it's gonna be fucking interesting yeah because i am a hard person to work for i expect the best and the reason i do is because i see good in people and i want them to explore that to the full ability and the second that i see somebody slacking off like i i'm doing them a favor by making sure that they sell something yeah and calling them out and just 100 keeping them at that level yeah dude it's i feel like that's i mean it is your job too is to demand that sort of Expert, we're in expectations. We're in competition. Yeah. In every, in everything we do, we're in competition. So we got to make sure that every corner of what we're doing is being competitive and is being the best at that one thing. Yeah. Uh, and then final question: uh, What you obviously have done some podcasts. You have your Eve's Drop, uh, Award an award-winning winning. Thank you. podcast. You have the Optic Podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done some other Highly podcasting. Podcast. Yeah, that just launched recently. That one's tough um, because since I don't live in LA, I have to fly in. So just to give you a schedule, just so people understand, like I'll fly in on a Wednesday night, right after my work is done, and I'll, yeah. I'll purposely take like all the meetings for that one week, those, so I can have Thursday, Friday free to vlog, but also to go and shoot those podcasts. How many but, do you record? Like so, last time I was there, I filmed four podcasts yeah. back to back, no breaks in between, and I'm smoking while I'm doing that. So you can imagine that by the time <laughs> uh, you get to the third, fourth, three, one. I'm just like zonked out of my mind. And it's, it's like, it's the toughest thing to keep track of because, you know, not only does my mind just wander because of my regularly. Mind, yeah. Regularly. Yeah. But when you're, when you're on a different level, you're, you're, you're just like spectating and, and feeling every emotion and seeing everything as it's happening, a little movement, what like the twitch of the you're eye. You're just like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just like. I get gone. So. Yeah, because I imagine because you don't live out there, yeah, you have to shoot a lot in a row to keep it yeah. on schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, I experienced that for the first time leading up to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the most ahead I've ever been with scheduling videos and stuff. Cool. So I have things scheduled out until next Friday. Uh, so yeah, it was a big grind. The few days leading into this, I was editing till one, two in the morning, getting up at six, seven in the morning. Okay, yeah, hopefully. Consistency. Will come um, and with the podcast thing, if you're ever looking to have someone host a podcast under Optic mm-hmm. to get to know the fans and give the fans their own space. That's the entire purpose of Brick by Brick. Every episode's a, a different brick yeah, in the there, wall. There used to be another one called uh, the Optic Topic. I've I heard used, of it. I used to, I used to watch that. It was like, like I think three dudes from from Reddit. I wish I remember the names, but uh, but I used to watch that. I, any anything that people create around Optic, like I watch, yeah. so I can see what who's wrong mostly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's good. So, so break by break is the is the name of the podcast. Yep, every episode's a different break. We uh, we just get to know Optic members. The first season was very How Optic. Many episodes are you? Uh, we just launched season two. I have three episodes recorded. One is live. Okay. The first season, I think I only got twelve or thirteen episodes out. Um, but this season, my approach has been get through some optic related questions first and then spend the second half just getting to know people Mm -hmm. um making it a more casual approach Mm -hmm. because otherwise it starts to get repetitive asking you who's what's your favorite player player, yeah yeah Yeah, Um, it's it's all about relating to them in a in a more like we have this in common right like we're gamers we play call of duty we yeah you know we spectate the boys play i want to get to know people beyond that yeah like what is yeah like what's their passion what would you like to do yeah if you could what would be the job that you do for optic that's one of the questions yeah (laughs) Yeah, if you could join optic in any way shape or form uh, I've bounced around a bit. I'd say a younger version of me would have been originally sniper turned competitive. Uh, champs, it was the last Champs, 2019, Black Ops 4. Um, that event, I went, wow, it's actually really cool to be like a camera guy, like a hitch, like being like shooting vision type stuff, because I did a lot of that sort of stuff yeah, on that event. Yeah. Um, now, heroes, man. Uh, oh, absolutely. Bottom line, at the end of the day, everybody that, that that works for Optic or has worked for Optic, like come in to do one job, but they end up doing a whole bunch of other shit. Like yeah. Matt came in as my right hand man to film me and do my vlogs and edit. Be my your D Rock kind of for but, Gary V fans. Yeah, but but he ended up mm-hmm. doing the all the setups. He like obviously he's got more capabilities than than just recording and editing. So like he'll like 
you know, obviously like this this dude is so passionate about this that he's just good at everything. Yeah. And he became like the Swiss Army of of optic, and he he filled in every single gap. If somebody needs something needs to get mailed, he would go mail it. If something needs to be recorded, he'd record it. If he needs to go to scrum house to set up the shit, like he did that. Yeah. And that is like the level of like, I'll, if I hire you as a camera guy, I mean, look, I'm I am who I am. And I've been for so many years, but at the end of the day, like I'm the one that's driving mix well to the dentist. I'm the one that is yeah. making sure that you know, especially the, the back in those days, and everything's vacuumed and finding so, people for leaving yeah. trash around. You know, I, 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 the, the hands-on approach for me is like the the, the, the way to do it. So if, if you're gonna evolve at that level, then there's no reason. I mean, and also like the the, the player management relationship just becomes that much easier. I don't deal with agents when I'm when I'm negotiating with a player, right? Yeah. And, I'm, I've always been. You're a talking first. to him. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a player first guy. I've always been. So I don't need an in between guy for you to tell me whether or not you want to be here. If you don't want to be here, peace. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm still gonna be your friend. I'm still gonna. We're still gonna collab. Well, I think long term, that's the better approach too. If you develop those so. relationships with people, like they could always come back. Yep. You know, especially with players, right? Yeah, yeah. You get a top tier player. Um, say Shotzi goes for some reason. If you have that good relationship, he comes back. No, he's not going anywhere. That's right, Shotzi, you're here to, to too stay. Good, too good. Um, well, that's that's it, I guess. Thank you. Those are Thanks your again. Yeah, that's. Thank you for asking me, man. Thank you for being uh, on. This one the last time. Hopefully not. Okay. Hopefully you let not. me know when uh, you want me to come back. Anything. You, from you let me break, break, break. know you're. Uh, yeah, let me sign that. Back in in Stockton, I'll drive down. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out.